don't have your money. Come on, Barrett, you know the game. You pay for peace of mind. Can't you just look the other way this week, Joe? Come on, we can sort it out, right? It's not my call, Barrett. You pay one way or another. Please, Joe. How long have we known each other? We even used to be neighbours, for Christ's sake. I'd prefer not to give you another beating, Barrett. Welcome, sir. Please, take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse, then? I always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. Yes, she's a nurse, and quite a good one. What did she do to gain such notoriety? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu, something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse Crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no, Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. How is business around here? Business? I have no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me, came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever, madness, something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Have you been hurt? No, but that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Right, then. Show me what you have. Come 
Don't take a look. Don't be afraid. Time to pay, one way or another. You're late. Where's my money? Time to pay, one way or another. Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off! I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe to most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine, and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. May I ask what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the Wet Boot Boys, a gang from the docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. Most people don't become thugs when unemployed. This is a choice you made. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons, and that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by-all-means-necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. So you only hurt people because you care about me? Is that it? Don't be such a brat. I'll do what I must to provide us with food and medicine, that's all. Mum would never have let you bully an old friend like Mr. Lewis. Shame on you. Harry, I'm your father and I love you. But don't you ever speak to me like that again. What? You're gonna beat me too? Jesus. Give me patience. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I'd known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, 
He's just another thug. What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer, good one even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. It's never easy to find a new path in life, especially after the loss of a loved one. But crime is certainly not the best option. We've all had some rough times, ain't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody would be fool enough to stand against the wet boot, boy. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. Cheap price, good quality. You again? Come on, take a look. That's what do you want this time? Why is your relationship with your son so difficult? Harry and I are so different. Sometimes I wonder if he's my own blood. Seems he's ashamed to be my son. Why not change that then? If you used your strength to do good, perhaps Harry wouldn't feel that way about you. How dare you tell me what I should or shouldn't do with my boy? Who the fuck are you to interfere like that? I mean no harm to your family. But if you want my advice, this is no place to raise a child. No matter where we live, Harry will always be sick and frail. At least here, I'm respected. And no one will ever dare touch him. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Hello, young man. I'm Dr. Reed, and I would like to ask you a few questions. May I enter, please? Sorry, no, sir. My father does not like people entering our house, you see. Your father is worried about you, boy. He asked me to look for you. So my father actually worries about me, then? Okay, then. Come on in. I'm Harry, by the way. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? May I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. Yes, I know her. She came here to examine me when I was very sick. She said I should go out more.
How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like. Well, you know. Hmm. Speaking of which, what can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. That's all I have to say. Forgive my bluntness, young man, but you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? You have a roof over your head, a place to call home. Many people here are not as lucky, you know. That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. I wasn't even consulted when we moved here. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I, I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. You and your father have a difficult relationship, Harry. Tell me, did he ever hurt you? No. Never. My father can be brutal and rude, violent even, but he never touched an air on my head. What is going on between you two then? It's his job, if you can call it a job. He bullies people. Men and women we know, like poor Mr Lewis, it's just not right. Your father and Mr Lewis used to be good friends. What happened, Harry? I was young then. I don't remember Mr. Lewis ever coming back again after my mother died. Or was it after my father started bullying him? I don't know. Have you tried speaking to Mr. Lewis about it? I don't go out often, but yes. And he scolded me and told me to leave him alone. I guess my father frightens him too much. But you are not responsible for your father's actions. Am I not? Dad always says that he joined that gang for my safety. So if I wasn't born, people wouldn't be worrying about Colossus Joe. Would it ease tensions with your father if he got an honest job? Because he tried, you know. I can't say. I'd be glad if he dropped his thuggish activities. But I'm not sure it would be enough. Why is that? Sometimes I suspect it's me, Dr. Reed. Or it's this life. It's like I can't find my place. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. Thank you.
Good evening, Harry. May I come in? Sure. Sure. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. I feel so tired. I don't know if it's the epidemic, but everything seems so hard. You'll feel better with this. But you need to get a grip, young man. Medication alone won't cure melancholia. I'm not sure I'm happy with the idea of living long in a world like this. But I thank you for your concern, sir. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. You again? What do you want this time? Harry doesn't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why did you make him come here? I've always put my son's interests above everything else. Whatever he may think. Our house is small but affordable. The walls are thin, but the door is solid. You really love your son, don't you, Mr. Peterson? He's my pride and joy. Even if he hates me for the choices I make and pushes me buttons more than he should. Do you have any regrets? Only one. Not to have my beloved wife by my side. She died when Harry was little. My sweet Jane. She gave the boy confidence. Since the criminal nature of your job means you could be arrested, are you not afraid of what would happen to your boy if you were? No one will ever take my son away from me. If that ever occurred, I'd, I'd hunt the bastard down and rip off his head with my bare hands. Why do you keep on working for the gang, Joe? You know it doesn't suit you. It's true, I hate this job. And I know I made some bad choices, but I'm a wet boot boy now. People won't forget it. You could leave tomorrow. Start another life in another town. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. We are poor. My son's weak. And there's no way he'll endure another disappointment. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? What do you know of Harry Peterson? The boy seems so fragile, not like his father at all. Harry's a good boy, but he spends most of his time complaining. He's had it tough, all right, but he needs to grow a pair. What troubles him exactly? Well, despite being his father's son, almost everything, I think. He never wanted to come to Whitechapel in the first place. Hates this place more than most of us. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis.
This could be the box Lewis thought he lost. Huh. There's a letter inside. A love letter from Joe Peterson's wife, addressed to Barrett Lewis. Who should I give it to, I wonder? as you have the money. Good evening. Goodbye, Miss Swanborough. Perhaps we'll talk again. One way or another. 
on each other. We even used to be neighbours, for Christ's sake. I'd prefer not to give you an up... Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Barrett, you had an affair with Joe's wife, didn't you? Yeah, I did. She's the only woman I loved. My first regret is that she stayed with Joe after Harry was born. The second is I never shed a tear when she died. Did you ever try talking to Joe? Never. But I suspected he knew everything, even without knowing it. And he decided to make me pay in his own way. Do you mean... you're Harry's father? No one will ever know for sure. And it's better that way. And I don't believe I'd have been all that bad as a dad. I found this box in an abandoned building nearby. I believe it belongs to you. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is mine. So, you face those loons that roam around there. Extraordinary. I suppose I was lucky. Luck is a commodity round here. Yours should be properly rewarded. About this package, it's not just tools and trinkets, is it? I want to be rude or anything after your kind gesture, but it's none of your business. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. Good evening, Harry. May I come in? Sure. Sure. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Do you remember when Barrett Lewis was close to your family? To your mother? Not really. I was too young. But I remember it was a happier time. Mr. Lewis was funny. He often had dinner with us. Why are you sad then? Because it hurts to remember a time when my father used to laugh and smile. It hurts to realize he's as sad as me now. How was he towards you? He was nice, I guess. He never forgot my birthday. He always offered me books. I liked books. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. You again? Goodbye. Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick, though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her. But I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania, like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. You can put your own life in danger. That's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? 
If you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends on the price of your medicine. I am shocked that you would think I am that sort of man. Forgive my suspicion. I'm so used to liars with good manners. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Still want more from Christina? When we spent the night together, my wallet went missing. Are you calling me a thief? I don't have your stupid wallet. I know you. You're a nice girl. Can't we solve this amicably? No, I don't think so. And if you think you know me just because we shared the bed together, you're just a lousy and arrogant journalist.
Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? I'm convinced there is more at work here than a simple epidemic. Really? To be honest, I could say the same. Some of the sick I saw or heard of. My God, what happened to them? Christina Popper claims she sells her body because she can't find any other work. Do you believe her? Of course I do. Her story is exactly what I want my readers to understand. We live in an intolerant and divided nation. Do you think things will ever change, Mr. Darby? I believe the situation can only improve. And now that women can vote, I'm convinced things will change. Tell me, Clayton. Do you really think this young woman stole your wallet? Christina? Yes. I recently met her. A nice girl, despite her questionable conduct. How exactly did you meet Christina? During my investigation, I offered my hotel room to her to rest and get away from the street. And what happened? The next morning, my wallet and my watch had disappeared. I suppose that's what you get for being a good Samaritan. If you are going to sleep with a lady of the night, Clayton, I would advise you to be cautious. I can't really be mad at her, though. She's just trying to survive. She doesn't have many options. Was it wise to become so intimate with a woman you were supposed to interview, Clayton? Maybe it was. But I have learned to look for the inner truth and beauty in people. I apologize. I didn't mean to be rude. What can you tell me about this woman? She is very sensitive. So nostalgic about her country. I saw her cry once because she'd lost a precious souvenir from her homeland. What was it? A scarf her brother gave her before she came to England. Why are you so concerned? You seem to have something on your mind, Mr. Darby. That we could make peace if I could find it and give it back to her. But I'm afraid she lost a scarf somewhere during her night shift. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell.
Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time, until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Clayton Darby claims he will... I believe... Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Did you steal Clayton Darby's wallet? Tell me the truth, Christina. Of course I stole it. But I never thought he would come back to look for it. Why did you do it? He seems to trust you. For a time I thought he was different from other men. In the end, he just wanted to sleep with me. Same as the others. Perhaps Clayton is different. Maybe you two should talk. A conversation couldn't hurt. I know what I am and what people call me. I sleep with men for money. If I can accept that, why can't he? No. My future is with the ones I love, not with Clayton Darby. The ones you love? The money you stole is not for you, then. My brother is still in our hometown in Romania. I am the only one who can buy him a ticket to England. Is it worth risking your health and your life for your brother's safety? He's the only family I have left. I had to leave Romania without him. I can't be happy until he is near me again. I understand your concern. I spent many months away from my family when I served on the front line in France. Every time I write to him, I fear I won't receive an answer. It kills me to know he is still there. But what about your life, Christina? Are you so worried about your brother's survival that you'll risk your own? You think you know it all because you fought in the war. But my brother is no soldier. I know. We all understand the risks to soldiers. But we don't necessarily recognize the civilian casualties caused by these conflicts. Yes. Wars are decided by rich men who will never take the risk of being shot, raped, or maimed. Does your brother know what you do to earn the money to bring him here? Don't be simple, of course not. And he must never know. Everything will be different once he is here with me. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can.
Pay me a bottle, and I'll... Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Good evening. Do you know that Christina is hoping to pay for her brother to travel to England in the near future? I see. No, she didn't tell me that. But that explains many things. Do you believe she will ever see her brother again? As long as the war rages in Europe, I'm afraid her chances of seeing her brother again are slim to none. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Come on, Baron, you know the game. You 